Uh, the project's called the San Rafael Swell Mine Openings Closures. And uh, uh, mines, when they're not used, these old mines, uh, they need to be closed because of the, the safety aspects. Uh, we have a lot of recreation. We're getting more and more recreation all the time. Uh, these adits are visited by ATVs, uh, bike groups, motorcycle groups, and just hikers, people that want to go out and enjoy what's up here. And uh, most of these are uranium mines, and they have uh, a lot of radiation, alpha particles, uh, gamma radiation. And uh, we just didn't think it was safe for people to camp and hike and, and uh, to motorize in them. There's been a lot of challenges with this project. It began about 10 years ago. Uh, we did the inventory work in 2005 and we had uh, cultural surveys done at the sites. Uh, we had bat surveys completed. We had to do the NEPA work and um, plan for the radiation protocols for the construction work on the site. The San Rafael Swell is located in Emory County, Utah, about 100 miles north to south and maybe 60 miles east to west, and it's a, it's a large, uh, double-plunging anticline uh, here in central south Utah. Most of the mining cranked up in the 1920s and later uh, when the United States used uh, uranium for its atomic energy program. In the 50s, the uh, United States uh, paid for, in fact, they were the only uh, buyer of uranium. Uh, since then, uh, it had a, a little uptick in the 70s, at least 50 years since most of these have been, been operated. And so all of the 172 adits and shafts that we've closed, uh, anybody that had a mining claim on it, were given the opportunity to uh, bond for it and uh, just to make sure that when they were done mining that these were sealed up uh, the way they should be. Uh, many people wanted to preserve the historic fabric of these mines. Uh, in some remote areas, it's best to just backfill them and, and make it look like no one had ever been there. And so, as much as we could, we tried to preserve the historic context of all of these. The project has been going well. Um, with all the, the hurdles and the remoteness of some of these sites, the contractors have been getting in there. Uh, they are really good at this work, but it was one of the more difficult projects that they've, that they've done. Um, some of the openings are a quarter mile, half mile in from where you can drive a vehicle, and they've had to carry materials in or else um, shuttle ATVs up to the base of the cliff and then hike it up or tram up um, materials up to the openings in order to close them. An opening like, um, like this one, for instance, might have taken a couple of days to complete. Um, and with the 172 openings that we, we've had, it's, it's been about five or six months more. Our typical mine closures are um, backfills using either a track hoe or even by hand with picks and shovels. We build walls out of block or we use native stone material. We have uh, rebar grates or bat gates and we also use polyurethane foam in some of the closures. One of the most important things to the BLM is making sure that it's reclaimed and reclaimed right. Uh, we want it to look good when we're done. And in this case, uh, every one of the uh, adits and shafts that I've had to inspect in the state and the abandoned mines program has done a, a superior job. Uh, you can't hardly even tell that they've been there. Uh, the closures uh, look good, they're professional, and I think they're everything we wanted them to be.
We had a lot of partners. We worked uh, very closely with Emory County and CITLA. Uh, we also had meetings with SUA and uh, other environmental groups. We worked really hard with the state of Utah and they've been uh, uh, very easy and willing to work with uh, great working partners.